Welcome to our lesson about coordinate systems. In this lesson, we'll be exploring how to use the Cartesian and polar coordinate systems and the relations between these two systems. We're also going to learn how to convert data from one coordinate system to the other coordinate system. Let's begin this all with a simple line. I'm going to start it at the origin point, 0, 0. The second point will be three units in the x direction, tab to register, and then four units in the y direction, tab, and enter. And right click, and done. I've just created a line using the Cartesian coordinate system. Later on, we're going to learn how to create a line using the polar coordinate system as well. Let me bring in a diagram. Here's a picture of the horizontal axis, and this is commonly known as the x-axis, as you know. The middle point toward the right are considered the positive values on the x-axis. To the left of the middle point are considered the negative values of this axis. Here's the vertical axis, also known as the y-axis. Any value above the x-axis is considered a positive value. Any value below the x-axis is known as a negative value. This way of organizing points in space is called the Cartesian coordinate system. It's also known as the rectangular coordinate system. In the Cartesian coordinate system, to reference a point in space, we first use the value on the horizontal or x-axis, followed by a comma, and then the value on the y or vertical axis. The point at which the x and y axes intersect has coordinates 0, 0. This is known as the origin point, and it's from this point that we measure our coordinates. For example, let's place a point about here. We'll call this coordinate 3, 4. And to create this point, I've moved three steps in the positive x direction and four steps in the positive y direction. Let's create another point now. This time, it'll be in the negative x direction. Here is point minus 7, comma, 10. In other words, to create this point, I've moved 7 steps in the negative x direction and 10 steps in the positive y direction. Let's take a look at one more point, a point with negative values in both the x and y directions. This point has coordinates minus 5, comma, minus 9. And now let's talk about how to create lines in space using Cartesian coordinates. In my example, my line connects two points, minus 8, comma, 4, and 6, comma, minus 7. Now let's go back to the example that we started this lesson with, a line from the origin point up to point 3, comma, 4. The first point on this line has coordinates 0, comma, 0, and the second point on this line has coordinates 3, comma, 4. Let's learn how to define this line in terms of polar coordinates. In the polar coordinate system, the positive x-axis is known as 0 degrees. The y-axis is defined as 90 degrees. The negative x-axis is 180 degrees and the negative y-axis is 270 degrees. In the polar coordinate system, we define a point by distance and angle. Here, r represents the distance from the origin point to the point we created. The theta symbol represents the angle from the horizontal line counterclockwise. Let's check out how we can figure out the values of r and theta. The most obvious way would be the r squared formula, and generally that's the easiest way for, as you can see, the line and its relation to the x and y axes make a right triangle. I'm going to take a moment to recap some of the basic trigonometry that lets us figure this out. You may remember the Pythagorean theorem. This teaches us that r squared equals x squared plus y squared. In other words, 
The hypotenuse squared equals the adjacent side squared plus the opposite side squared. In our case, the opposite side is 4 units and the adjacent side is 3 units. This means that the distance r squared equals 4 squared or 16 plus 3 squared or 9. 16 plus 9 equals 25 and that's the value of r squared. The square root of 25 is 5 and thus we have the length of the variable r. Basically, our distance is 5. This triangle has got a ratio of 3 to 4 to 5. And we've established our first polar coordinate, r, the distance from the origin, as 5. Now let's take a moment to determine the second polar coordinate, the angle. In order to do this, we need to review some additional basic trigonometry. In this right triangle, we know the length of the opposite and adjacent sides. The opposite leg is 4, and the adjacent leg has a value of 3. The tangent trigonometric function is the function that uses these two values in its equation. The tangent of the angle equals the opposite over the adjacent, or 4 divided by 3. In order to find the value of theta, we can use the inverse tangent on both sides. The equation will look something like this. Arctangent of the tangent theta equals arctangent of 4 over 3. From here, we have a value of theta equaling arctangent of 4 over 3. In order to figure out the angle, we're going to use the inventor parameters window. Let's exit my diagram, and we'll go to the model tab. Click on parameters. If you don't see parameters, just right click anywhere on the ribbon, scroll down to panels, and select parameters from the list of available panels. We're going to discuss the parameters window in more detail in a later lesson in this course. For now, let's select a user parameter and let's select Add Numeric. Then we'll enter the parameter name, theta. Now let's select a unit. We'll double click in the cell, expand the angularity branch, and select degrees. Then click OK. Now we'll enter an equation, arc 10, then the argument. We enter the argument inside parentheses, 4 over 3. Oops, I entered the argument outside of the parentheses. Okay, let's get 4 over 3 inside those parentheses there. And click outside to register. Our result is 53.13 degrees. That's our angle. To review, in the Cartesian system, the point described as 3, 4 is known in the polar coordinate system as 5, 53.13. OK, let's close my diagram and return to Inventor. And let's close the parameters window. Go to the Sketch tab. We're going to put our findings to the test. Let's activate the Line tool. Right click. Coordinate type, and let's select Polar. Now let's mouse over this point. And as you see in the heads up display, our point in the polar coordinate system is located at 5 and 53.13 degrees. This concludes our first lesson about coordinate systems. In our next lesson, we're going to learn how to convert polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. So get your trigonometry beanies on again. We're going to be pulling in some of the functions that you probably haven't seen since high school to calculate our values. We'll see you back in a moment.